something like that. David Perry, you remember him? He came here one year and did a Shakespeare workshop here. Anyway, from all the way from Rada, I brought him in. Um, anyway, we were in class, we were working on a scene from Shakespeare, I forgot which play, but in the next room, they were doing movement exercises and they started playing uh, the theme from... Ah, yes. Yes, and he stopped, right in the middle, he said, stop the scene. And he leaned forward and he said, Chariots of fire, isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? <laughs> and so we had to sit and listen, That's and it was fine with me because I loved it. <laughs> and then we carried it. Uh, they were prevented, it printed in 1623 in London. Where? Pretty sure in London. I wonder what the name of the press was. That's really cool. Right? First folio. <laughs> I have to First take folio. a picture. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> First folio. Wow, that's great. I'll, I'll dig out my. This is um, the first of the There's 200 of them. <laughs> there is one first folio. There probably right? is a first one, but who knows which one it is. Well, there's a lot. <laughs> it probably of came out wonky. There's a lot of them that don't have uh, all the plays in them. Oh. So, yeah. They didn't survive intact. Well, no, they thought they had gotten them all, and then they realized, no, oh, we don't. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have 10, every play. <laughs> so they had to make a uh, second printing, and uh, they had no idea that it was going to be so popular four centuries later, but uh, that's what happens. And also, half of the plays in this folio weren't printed. That's what I was saying about the other one, yeah, the first one that didn't... Uh, was missing half the plays? 17 of them. 17. Yeah. They printed the first one? They printed the first one, and then they realized they didn't have enough, so they... Why don't they print the first one? They I'm not going to tell you anything. Imagine how heavy <laughs> that book would be if they had all 17 books. That would, it would have weighed like 100 pounds if they had all the plays in there. So this one does have all of them. It's just missing a few. Yeah. Oh. This was done, this is the one that was done seven years after Shakespeare's death. Folgers Library the one has I about have, 200 yeah. of them, because they went ape collecting them for a uh, prosperity purpose. The book right there in 2016, they said it was worth about $4 million. Today on auction, probably $8 million, $10 million. So, are we showing it or going? Since that is so funny. I thought I was playing Countess. That's what you told me, Jim. Now I'm all befuddled in my way. I brain. told you how long now. From Did the you very really? beginning. <laughs> you just wanted to play. I did want to be mommy. <laughs> I'm sorry. You I know, Leila. mommy. We can anyway. find out who Helen is. We have to do this part. Of those rocks. This is the second, down. beginning She'll of the second get part. What she wants. <laughs> The card comes out here. Anyway, <laughs> if she has to do it, she will get it. Oh my gosh, she's just unbelievable. That's a good way of introducing what what she did do. <laughs> what did she do? She got it. <laughs> we have a picture of Entering the second floor room. Wait, well, you want to say something? Are you starting? We should do Yeah, that. I thought maybe I would start. So she's going over to here to Stella. She's from uh, yeah. Lucilia. Okay. But she goes to Florence first, then goes over to Night the Marchers. Night Marchers. Night Marchers. Not in her Is that in the play? I know she's wearing a 15th century cuckoo in LA. Thinking that it's on the way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the second okay. Florence is over See, here. See, that cuckoo in oh, LA. Well, it's probably not a cuckoo. But I thought, like but I, she's, I thought oh, she was going to the king of France. No. Maybe she it's got a budget ticket. Uh, Paris is up above here. So she went up there. It's a good one. Spain and the Spain. Spain. Like Marvel. Marvel. I mean, they were going to France to take care of the king. Yeah, over the bar. Ouch. You don't ouch at all? I don't like you? things in my cavities. <laughs> <laughs> there, cavities. Don't you sit back there? Oh, 
I expect you're six feet apart here. Come to go out in the other room and sit. We like to have you in the circle. You can adjust. Just get close. I was picturing us in the corner. For me, it's not. I mean, if I put um. I know you didn't want to wear the mask, but you could at least sit over here where we can see you. Well, I could, but I mean, I didn't know where it is. Huh? Jim, why, why is the door open? <laughs> What's that? I thought we were going to sit up there at first. Come on, come over there. Okay, I'll get over there. Thanks. I'll get some more air in the. Well, yeah, I thought circulation. But you know what's funny about it is that it's all ugly. Hot air coming in that door. There you go. So now you're in the circle. Okay. And just how close you feel comfortable. It's not me, it's how comfortable you are. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I'm not comfortable unless you're here. Uh, okay, I want to hear a stage voice one. too. A lot more cops and stage voice you can do. Projected. English <laughs> flag. <laughs> Peter ought to be jealous. The yeah, funny thing is, I got it in Brunei. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. We had a bomb. With my technique. Maybe he's filming. <laughs> you know, they're always taking pictures. Of okay, so now. Anyway. I'm amazed. All right, so. Countess and. Is her son. In delivery, my son for me, I bury a second husband. And I, in going, madam, weep for my father's death anew. But I must attend his majesty's command, to whom I am now in war, evermore in subjugation. You shall find of the king a husband, madam, and you, sir, a father. He that is so generally is to, at all times, a good of necessity hold his virtue to you and whose worthiness would stir it up where it wanted rather than lack it where there is such abundance what hope is there of his majesty's amendment he hath abandoned the uh, physicians madam and under whose practices he hath persecuted time with hope and finds no other advantage in the process but only the losing of hope by time. This young gentlewoman had a father. Oh, that had. How sad a passage tis, whose skill was almost as great as his honesty, had it stretched so far, would have made nature immortal, and death would, should have played for lack of work, would for the king's sake he were living. I think it would be the death of the king's disease. How called you the man you speak of, madam? He was famous, sir, in his profession, and it was his great right to be so. Gerald de Navon. Ah, he was excellent. Indeed, madam. The king very lately spoke of him admiringly and, uh, and um, morningly. He was uh, skillful enough to live still, if knowing the if no, if knowledge could be set up against mortality. What is it, my good lord, the king languishes of? A fistula, my lord. I have heard not of it before. It were, I, I would it were not notorious. But this gentlewoman, the daughter of Gerard Nabar Narbonne? His sole child, my lord, and bequeathed to my overlooking. I have these hopes of her good with good that her education promises. The dispositions she inherits, which makes fair gifts fairer, for where an unclean mind carries virtuous qualities, their commendations go with pity. They are virtues and traitors too. In her they are the better for their simpleness. She derives her honesty and achieves her goodness. Your commendations, madam, yet from her tears. Tis the best bride a maiden can seize in her praise in. The remembrance of her, of her father never approaches her heart, but the tyranny of her sorrows takes all livelihood from her cheek. No more of this, Helena. Go to, no more, lest it be rather that you thought 
that you affect a sorrow that you have. I do affect a sorrow, indeed, but I have it too. Moderate lamentation is the right of the dead. Excessive grief, the enemy of the living. If the living be enemy to the grief, the excess makes it soon loyal. Madam, I desire your holy wishes. Be thou blessed, Bertram, and succeed thy father in manners as in shape. Thy blood and virtue contend for empire and need, and thy goodness share with thy birthright. Love all, trust a few, do wrong to none, be able for thy enemy rather in power than use, and keep thy friend under thy own life's key. Be checked for silence, but never taxed for speech. What heaven more will, that thou may furnish and my prayers pluck down, fall on thy head. Farewell, my lord. Lord. He is an unseasoned courtier, good my lord. Advise him. He cannot want the best that shall attend his love. Heaven bless him. Farewell, Bertram. The best wishes that can be forged in your thoughts be servants to you. Be comfortable to my mother, your mistress, and make much of her. Farewell, pretty lady. You must hold the credit of your father. Oh, was that all? I think not on my father, and these great tears grace his remembrance more than those I shed for him. What was he like? I have forgotten him. My imaginations carry no favor in its but Bertram's. I am undone. There is no living, none, if Bertram be away. T'were all one that I should love a bright particular star and think to wed it. He is so above me in his bright radiance and collateral light. Must I be comforted not in his sphere? The ambition in my love thus plagues itself. The hind that would be mated by the lion must die for love. T'was pretty through play to see him every hour, to sit and draw his arched brows, his hawking eye, his curls in our heart's table, heart too capable of every line and trick of his sweet favor. But now he's gone, and my idolatrous fancy, my sanctify his re what is that word? Re relics. Relics. Who comes here? One that goes with him? I love him for his sake. And yet I know him a notorious liar. Think him a great way, fool, solely a coward. Yes, these fixed eagles sit so fit in him that they take place. When virtue's steely bones look bleak, I cold wind with all full off we see cold wisdom waiting on superfluous folly. Save you, fair queen. And you, monarch? No. <laughs> and no. Are you meditating on virginity? <laughs> Aye. You have some stain of soldier in you. Let me ask you a question. Man is empty to virginity. How might you barricado against him? Keep him out. But he assails in our virginity through valiant in the defense, yet is weak. Unfold to us some warlike resistance. There is none. Man, sitting down before you, will underbind you and blow you up. Ugh, bless our poor virginity from underminers and blowers up. Is there no military policy how virgins might blow up men? Virginity being blown down, man will quicklier be blown up. Mary, in blowing him down again, with the breach yourselves made, you lose your city. It is not politic in the commonwealth of nature to preserve virginity. Loss of virginity is rational increase. And there was never virgin got till virginity was first lost. That you were made of is metal to make virgins. Virginity being once lost, may be ten times found. By being ever kept, it is ever lost. 
Tis too cold a companion. Away with it. I will stand for to little, though therefore I die a virgin. There's little can be said, and tis against the rule of nature. To speak on the part of virginity is to accuse your mother's, which is the most infallible disobedience. He hath hanged himself is a virgin. Virginity murders itself, and should be buried in highways out of all sanctified limit as a desperate offendress against nature. Virginity breeds mites, much like a cheese, consumes <laughs> itself to the very pairing, and so dies with feeding its own stomach. Besides, virginity is peevish, proud, idle, made of self-love, and is the most inhibited sin in the canon. Keep it not. You cannot choose but lose by it. Out with it. Within ten years it will make itself two, which is a goodly increase. And the principle itself, not much the worse. Away with it. How might one do, sir, to lose it on to her own liking? Mary, let me see. Mary, ill, to like him that ne'er like it likes. Tis a commodity. We lose with the gloss with lime. The longer kept, the less worth. Off with it while it's venerable, venable. Answer the time of request. Virginity, like an old courtier, wears her cap out of fashion. Richly suited, but unsuitable. Just like the brooch and the toothpick, which wear not now. Your date is better in your pie and your porridge than in your cheek. And your virginity, your old virginity, is like one of our French withered pears. It looks ill, it eats dryly. Mary, tis a withered pear. It is, it, it was formerly better, Mary, yet tis a withered pear. Will you anything with Not it? Not my virginity yet. There shall your master have a thousand loves, a mother, a mistress, and a friend. A phoenix, captain, and an enemy, a guide, a goddess, and a sovereign, a counselor, a traitress, and a deer, his humble ambition, proud humility, his jarring concord, and his discord, dulcet. Dulcet, yes. His faith, his sweet disaster with a world of pretty, fond, adaptuous Christendoms that blinking Cupid gossips. Now shall he, I know not what he shall, God send him well. The court's a learning place, and he's one. What's one, Faith? That I wish well, tis pity. What's pity? That wishing well had not a body in it, which might be felt that we, the poor were born, whose baser stars do shut us up in wishes, might, with effects of them, follow our friends, and show that we alone must think, which never returns us thanks. When he was predominant. Oops. I don't know where you are. that. I skipped the page. Uh, Enter page, not <laughs> skip page. Uh, 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 could you read that uh, for us? Page. Monsieur Parolles, my lord calls for you. Little Helen, farewell. If I can remember thee, I will think of thee at court. Monsieur Parolles, you were born under a charitable star. Under Mars, I... I especially think under Mars. Why under Mars? The wars have so kept you under that you must needs be born under Mars. When he was predominant... When he was retrograde, I think, rather. Why think you so? You're so much backward when you fight. That's for advantage. So is running away, when fear proposes the safety, but the composition that your valor and fear makes you, in you, is a virtue of good will. And I like the way well. I am so full of business, I cannot answer thee acutely. <laughs> I will return perfect courtier, in the which my instruction shall serve to naturalize thee. So thou wilt be capable of a courtier's counsel, and understand what advice shall thrust upon thee. Else thou diest in thine unthankfulness, 
and thine ignorance make thee away. Farewell. When thou hast leisure, say thy prayers. When thou hast none, remember thy friends. Get thee to a good husband, and use him as he uses thee. So, farewell. Our remedies oft in ourselves do lie, which we ascribe to heaven, the faded sky, gives us a free scope on the backward pole, our slow designs when we ourselves are dull. What power it is, is it which mounts my love so high, that makes me see and cannot feed my arm? The mightiest space in fortune nature brings, to join like likes and kiss like native things. Impossible to be strange attempts to those that weigh their pains and sense, and do suppose that hath not been can't be whoever strove to show from merit that did miss her love. The king's disease, my project may deceive me, but my intents are fixed and will not leave me. So because, oh. because of her father having been the grand doctor that he was, he gave her the instruction on a particular disease, which happens okay. to be the king's disease. Okay. So she says, I can fix it. Yeah. I will go there and also I'll see Bertram. Right. Florentines and the sinners I by the ears have fought with equal fortune and continue braving war. So it is reported, sir? Nay, it is most credible. We here received the certainty vouched from our cousin Austria with caution that the Florentine will move us to a speedy aid. Wherein our dearest friend uh, prejudicates the business and would seem to have us make denial. His love and wisdom approved, so to your majesty may plead for amplest credence. He had offered our answer. That Mine that her search implies, but riddle like live sweetly when she dies. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Had you not lately an intent, speak truly, to go to Paris? Madam, I have. Wherefore, tell truth. I will tell truth. By grace itself, I swear. Yes, I can help thee too, thou shalt not miss. We're rolling! Act two, scene one. Alright, okay. Ah, farewell, your lords. On all the fond de la patrouille, je déclare it arrivée. These warlike principles do not throw from you. And you, my lord, farewell. Share this advice betwixt you. If both gain all the gift that the stretch itself is received and is enough for both. Is that hope, sir? I have to well entered soldiers to return and find your grace in hell. Oh, no, 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 can that be? And yet my heart will not confess he owes the malady that doth with my life besiege. Farewell, young lords, abianto, whether I live or die, be you the sons of worthy Frenchmen. That higher Italy, the fated that hath inherited but the fall of the last monarchy, see that you come not to woo honor, but to wed it. When the bravest conquest and shrieks, find what you seek, that they may cry you loud. I say, farewell. Jim. And that would be whoever wants to speak. How that your bidding serve your majesty? <laughs> oh, the girls of Italy, you take heed of them. They say our French lacks like language to deny if they condemn the oh, it's très, très bien. Beware the fact is before you serve. Mm, yeah. Well, our hearts receive your warning. Oh, yes. <laughs> Farewell, a bientôt. Come hither to me. Oh, my sweet lord, that you will stay behind us. It is not his fault, the spark. 
Oh, tis brave wars. Most admirable, I've seen those wars. I am commanded here and kept a coil with two young and the next year and tis too early. And by thy mind stand it, boy, steal away bravely. I shall stay here the four horse to a smock. Creaking my shoes on the plain masonry till honor be bought up and no sword worn, but one to dance with. By heaven, I'll steal away. There's, There's honor, honor in the theft. theft. Commit it, Count. <laughs> I'm your accessory, and so farewell. I grow to you, and our parting is a tortured body. Farewell, uh, Captain. Sweet Monsieur Perrault. Noble heroes. My sword and yours are kin. Good sparks and lustrous award good metals. You'll find in the regiment of the Spinny one Captain Spurio with his cicatrice, an emblem of war, here on his sinister cheek. It was this very sword entrenched it. Say to him, I live, and observe his reports for me. We shall, noble no, 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 captain. Bars dotes on you for his no notices. Oh, oh, One more. <laughs> what will ye do? Stay, the king. Use a more spacious ceremony to the noble lords. You have restrained yourself within the list of too cold and ado. Be more expressive to them, for they wear themselves in the cap of the time. There do muster true gait, eat, speak and move under the influence of the most received star. And though the devil lead the measure, such are to be followed. After them, and take more dilated farewell. And I will do so. Worthy fellows, and like to prove most sinewy swordsmen. Pardon, my lord, for me and my tidings. I'll feel thee to stand up. Ah, oh, there's a man at his stands that has brought his Pardon. <laughs> I would you had kneeled, my lord, to ask me mercy, and at my bidding you could stand up. I would I had. So I had broke thy pate <laughs> and asked thee mercy for it. Oh, my good faith. Across, but uh, uh, good lord, tis thus. Will you be cured of your infirmity? No. Oh. <laughs> Will you eat no grapes, my royal fox? <laughs> uh, but you, ah, you my, will my noble grapes. And if my royal fox could reach them, I have seen a medicine that's able to breathe life into a stone and quicken a rock and make you dance canary with sprightly fire and motion which simple touch is powerful to arise. King Pepin, did they say? No, to give the great Charlemagne a pen in his hand to write to her a love line. Ooh, what her is this? Why, Dr. She, my lord, there's one arrived. If you will see her, now, by my faith and honor, if seriously I may convey my thoughts in this light deliverance, I have spoke with one that in her sex, her years, profession, wisdom, and constancy hath amazed me more than I dare blame my weakness at. Would you see her? Uh, for that is her demand, and know her business? That done, laugh well at me. <laughs> <laughs> now, good of you, bring in the admiration that we with thee may spend our wonder on, or take off thine by wondering how thou tookst it. <laughs> Nay, I'll fit you, and not be all day neither. <laughs> <laughs> Thus, he his special nothing ever prologues. Nay, come your way. <laughs> Ah, uh, this haste hath wings indeed. Uh, come your way. Uh. Uh, this is his majesty. Uh, say your mind to him. A traitor you do look like, and with such uh, traitors his majesty 
wis seldom <laughs> uh, fears it. And I am Crescent's uncle, that there leave you together, uh, fare you well. Uh, uh, now, fair one, does your business follow us? Aye, my good lord. Gerard de Narbonne was my father, one, in what he did profess well found. Oh, I, I knew him. The rather will I spare with pr my praises towards him, knowing him is enough. On his bed of death, many receipts he gave me, chiefly one, which as the dearest issue of his practice and of his old experience, the only darling, he bade me store up as a triple I, safer than mine own two, more dear, I have so. And hearing your high majesty is touched with the malignant cause, wherein the honor of my father's gift stands chief in power. I come to tender it, and my appliance was all bound humble in it. Rest against his valor, and my state that uh, that way is dangerous, since I cannot get yet find in my heart to repent. Oh, here he comes. I pray you, uh, make us friends, and I will pursue the amity. These things shall be done, sir. I pray you, sir. Uh, what's his tailor? Sir? Who's his tailor, that is? I know him well. I, sir, <laughs> he, sir, is a good word man and a very good tailor. Is she going to the king? She is. Will she away tonight? As you will have her. I have written my letters, casketed my treasure, given orders for our horses, and tonight, when I should take possession of the bride, end ere I do begin. A good traveler is something in the latter end of a dinner, but one that lies three-thirds and uses a known truth to pass a thousand nothings it should be once heard and thrice beaten. God save you, Captain. Is there any unkindness between my lord and you, Monsieur? I know not how I deserve to run into my lord's displeasure. You have made shift to run into it, boots and spurs and all, and like him that leapt into the custard, and out of it you'll run again, rather than suffer this question for your residence. It may be you have mistaken him, my lord. Ah, uh, and shall do so ever, though I took him, uh, to, uh, took him at his prayers. Uh, very well, my lord, and uh, believe this of me, there can be no kernel of this light nut. Uh, the soul of this man is in his clothes, and trust not him not in matter of heavy consequence. I have kept uh, them uh, tame and know their natures. Farewell, Monsieur. I have spoken better of you than you have worth or wit to deserve at my hand. But we must do good against evil. <laughs> An idle lord, I swear. I think not so. Why? Do you not know him? Yes, I do know him well, and common speech gives him a worthy pass. Here comes my cloak. I have, sir, and as I have was commanded from you, spoke with the king and have procured his leave. For present party only he desires some private speech with you. I shall obey his will. You must not marvel, Helen, at my course, which holds not color with the time, nor does the ministration and required office on my particular. Prepared I was not for such a business, therefore am I found so much unsettled. This drives me to entreat you that presently you take your way for home, and rather muse and ask why I entreat you, for my respects are better than they seem, and my appointments have in them a need greater than shows itself at the first view to you that know them not. <laughs> this to my mother. Twill be two days ere I shall see you, so I leave you, leave you to your wisdom. Sir, I can nothing say, but that I am your most obedient servant. Come, come, uh, no more of that. 
and ever shall with true observance seek to eke out that wherein towards me my homely stars have failed to equal my good fortune. Let that go. Uh, my, my haste is great. Farewell. Hi, home. Pray, sir, your pardon. Well, uh, what would you say? I am not worthy of thy love, my love. Nor, nor dare I say tis mine, and yet it is. But like a timorous thief, most fain would steal what law vouched mine own. What would you have? Something, and scarce so much, nothing indeed. I would not tell you what I would, my lord. Faith, yes, strangers and foes do sunder and not kiss. I pray you, stay not, but in haste to horse. I shall not break your bidding, my good lord. Where are my other men, monsieur? Go thou to our home, where I will never come, whilst I can shake my sword or hear the drum. Away, and for our flight, flight! Bravely, Coraggio! And with that, let's take a break! Seems the quarrel upon your grace's part, black and fearful upon the opposer. Therefore we marvel much our cousin friends would, in so just a business, shut his bosom against our borrowing prayers. Good, my lord, the reason of our time I cannot yield. But uh, like a common and an outward man, that was a great figure of council frames, of self unable motion. Therefore dare not say what I think of it, since I am found myself in, in certain grounds to fail as often as I guessed. Be it his pleasure. Uh, I am sure the younger of our nation that surfeit on her their ease uh, will day by day come here for physic. Welcome shall they be, all uh, and all the honors that can play from us shall on them settle. You know your place well. When better fall, your for your avail they fell. Tomorrow to the hill. <laughs> By my trust, I take my young lord to be a very melancholy man. No oh, observance, I pray you. Why, you will look upon his food and sing, man and rough and sing, ask questions and sing, pick his teeth and sing. I know a man that had the trick of melancholy, sold a silly manner for a song. Yeah. Let me see what he writes and what he means to yeah. him. No. And is it I that drive thee from the sport of court where thou was shot at with thy fair eyes to be the mark of smoking light? Come night and day, for with the dark, poor thief, I steal away. Steal, steal. The general of the I'm sorry, you're a good man. I thought I had that queued up. Here we go. Ah, why is it not playing? General of thy of our horse. Go ahead. Go ahead. General of our the general of our horse, oh, right. thou right. art, and we, that's great right. in our hope, lay our best love and credence upon thy promising fortune. Sir, it is a charge too heavy for my strength, but yet we'll strive to bear it for your worthy sake, to the extreme edge of hazard. Then go thou forth, and fortune play upon thy prosperous sum, and thou auspicious mistress. This very day, great Mars, I put myself into thy file. Make me but like my thoughts, and I shall prove a lover of thy drum, a hater of love. Why is this not playing? <laughs> Sent 
Prince Jacques Pilgrim, thither gone. Ambitious love hath so in me offended, that barefoot plod I the cold ground upon, with sainted vow my faults to have amended. Right, right, that form the bloody course of war, my dearest master, your dear son, may hide. Bless him at home in peace, whilst I from far his name with zealous fervor sanctify. His taken labors, bid him me forgive. I, his despiteful Juno, sent him forth from courtly friends, with camping foes to live, where death and danger dogs the heels of worth. He is too good and fair for death and me, whom I myself embraced to set him free. Ah, oh, what sharp stings are in her mildest words. Ronaldo, you did never lack advice so much as letting her pass so. Had I spoke with her, I would have well diverted her intents, which thus she hath prevented. Pardon me, madame. If I had given you this at overnight, she might have been or taken, and yet she writes. Pursue it would be vain, but vain. What angel shall bless this unworthy husband? He cannot thrive unless her prayers, whom heaven delights to hear and loves to grant, reprieve him from the wrath of greatest injustice. Write, write, Ronaldo, to this unworthy husband of his wife, that every word weigh heavy of her worth, that he does weigh too light. By greatest grief, though little he do feel it, set down sharply, dispatch the most convenient messenger, when happily he shall hear that she is gone, he will return, and I hope I may that she, hearing so much, will speed her foot again, led hither by pure love, which of them both is dearest to me. I have no skill and sense to make distinction. Provide this messenger, my heart is heavy and mine age is weak. Grief would have tears, and sorrow bids me speak. Okay, the next scene, uh, Una and Leilani, uh, Who's playing the widow? I have the widow. Okay, and you have Diana? I don't have it, but I can read it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and Diana is the one who pulls the bed trick on Bertram. Yeah, rascal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It is reported that he has taken their greatest commander, and that with his own hand he slew the Duke's brother. We have lost our labor. They okay, this is not where the picture comes in. They are amazed that she is armed for him, and keeps her guard with honest defense. The gods forbid else, so now they come. Antonio, the Duke's eldest son, that Aeschylus. Which is the Frenchman? He that with a plum kiss a most human fellow. He loves a wife if he were on the earth. He were much more goodlier if not a handsome gentleman. I like him well. His pity is not honest. Young, the same name that he sent to this place. Where I his lady, I would poison that vile rascal. Which is he? That Jack and A with scars. Why is he not gone? Perchance he's hurt in the band. Lose the lose our drum. Well. Well. She he shrewdly vexed at something. No. <laughs> he has spied us. Mary Hang. And your courtesy for a ring carrier. Truth is past. Come, pilgrim, I will bring you to where you shall host and enjoy penitence. There's four or five to great St. Jacques Bound, already at my house. I humbly thank you. Please, it's this matron and this gentle maid to eat with us tonight. The charge and thanking shall be for me. And to requite you further, I bestow some precepts of this virgin worthy you know. 
<laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> I sneaked up on me. <laughs> that goes there. Very good, my lord. Put him to it. Let him have his way. If your lordship and find him for the building, uh, yes, that's the one. Uh, hold me no more in your respect. On oh, my life, my lord, a bubble. Do you think I am so far deceived in him? Uh, we need a first and second uh, persons, because these are the two domain brothers. Uh, okay. um, believe it, my lord, in my, my own direct knowledge, without any malice, but to speak of him as my kinsman. He's the most noble crowd. An infinite and endless liar, an honorary yeah. promise breaker, the owner of no one good quality worth your lordship's entertainment. Do no. I say the second domain? Is that the, what it yes. is? Yes. Oh, okay. If it were fitting you him, less reposing too far in his virtue, which he hath not, he might at some great and trusty business in a main danger fail you. I would I knew in what particular action to try him. None better than to let him fetch off his drum, which you hear him so confidently undertake to do. I, with a troop of Florentines, will suddenly surprise him. Such I will have whom I am sure he knows not from the enemy. We will bind and could wink him so that he shall suppose no other but that he is carried into the leisure of the adversary when we bring him to our own tent, be but your lordship present at his examination. If he not do, if he do not, for the promise of his life, and in the highest compulsion of base fear, offer to betray you and deliver all the intelligence in his power against you, and then with the divine forfeit of his soul upon oath, never trust my judgment in anything. Oh, for the love of laughter, let him fetch off his drum. He says he has a strat just, just, how can I say, strategium Strat for it. When your lordship sees the bottom of his success in it, into what metal this counterfeit lump of ore will be melted. If you give him not John Drum's entertainment, your inclining cannot be removed. Here he comes. Oh, for the love of laughter, him this not the honor of his design. Let him fetch up his drum in any hand. Oh no, monsieur, this drum sticks sorely in your disposition. A pox on it. Let it go. Tis but a drum. But a drum? Tis but a drum? A drum so lost. There was excellent command to charge in with our horse upon our own wings to rend our own soldiers. That was not to be blamed in the command of the service. It was a disaster of war that Caesar himself could not have prevented. If he had been there to command. Well, we cannot greatly condemn our success. Some dishonor we had in the loss of that drum, but it is not to be recovered. It might have been recovered. It might, but it is not now. It is to be recovered. But that the merit of service is seldom attributed to the true and exact performer. I would have that drum, or another, thick jacket. Why, if you have stomach to it, monsieur, do you think your mystery and stratagem can bring this instrument of honor again into its native quarter? Be magnanimous in the enterprise and go on. I will grace the attempt for a worthy exploit. If you speed well in it, the duke shall both speak of it and extend to you what further becomes his greatness even to the utmost syllable of your worthiness. By the hand of a soldier, I will undertake it. But you must not now slumber in it. I'm about it this evening, and I will presently pen down my dilemmas, encourage myself in my certainty, put myself into my mortal preparation, and by midnight look to hear further from me. May I be bold to acquaint his grace you are gone about it? I know not what the success will be, my lord, but the attempt I vow. I know thou art valiant, and to be the possibility of thy soldiership, will subscribe for thee. Farewell. 
I love not my new words. No more than a fish loves water. Is not just a strange fellow, my lord, that so confidently seems to undertake this business, which he knows is not to be done, damns himself to do, and dares better to be damned than to do. You do not know him, my lord, as we do. Certain it is, he will steal himself into a man's favor, and for a week escape a great deal of discoveries. But when you find him out, you have him ever after. Why, do you think he will make no deed at all of this that so seriously he does address himself unto? None in the world <laughs> but return with an invention and clap upon you two or three troubles life, but we have almost embossed him. You shall see his fall tonight. For indeed, he is not for your lordship's respect. We'll make you some sport with the fox, ere we case him. He was first smoked by the old lord Lafeur, when his disguise and he is parted. Tell me what a sprat you shall find him, which you shall see this very night. I must if it's speed, is wicked meaning in a lawful deed, and lawful meaning in a lawful act. We're both not sin, and yet a sinful fact, but let's about it. No other way but this head corner. It's when you saw upon him, speak my terrible language, if you will. So you understand it, not yourself? No matter, for we must not seem to understand it, unless someone among us whom we must produce for an enterprise. Good captain, let me be the interpreter. Are not acquainted with him? Knows he not thy voice? No, sir, I warrant you. But what means he needs thee? Has thou to speak to us again? Even such as you speak to me. He must think of some band of strangers, either adversaries, entertainment. Now he has a smack of all neighboring languages, therefore we must, everyone to be a man of his own fancy, not to know what we speak one to another, so we seem to know is to know straight out our purpose. Talk language, gobble enough and good enough, as for you, in computer, you must seem very polite, politely, but couch folk. Here he comes. He got around two hours in the street, and then to return and swear in a riot to forges. Ten o'clock. Within these three hours, twill be time enough to go home. What shall I say I have done? It must be a very plausible invention that carries it. They begin to smoke me, and disgraces have of late knocked too often at my door. I find my tongue is too foolhardy, but my heart hath the fear of Mars before it, and of his creatures, not daring the reports of my tongue. This is the part truth that er thy own tongue was guilty of. What the devil should move me to undertake the recovery of this drum? Being not ignorant of the impossibility, and knowing I had no such purpose, I must give myself some hurts and say I got them in exploit. Yet slight ones will carry it. They will say, came you off with so little? And great ones I dare not give. Therefore, what's the instance? Tongue, I must put you into a butter woman's mouth and buy myself another Byzantine mule. If you paddle me into these perils, it is possible to know what he is and who he I would the cutting of my garments would serve the turn, or breaking of my Spanish sword. We cannot afford you so. Or the battering of my beard, as to say. Wasn't stratagem. It was not stratagem. Stratagem. Or to drown my clothes and say I was stripped. Hardly, sir. Though I swore I leapt from the window of the citadel, 
Thirty fathoms. I would. I had a any drum of the enemies. I would swear I would recover it. You shall hear one A drum now of the enemies. <laughs> we don't seem quite as energetic as we were a couple months ago. Where's it going here? Where's it going? Cargo! 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 I know you are the Moscow's regiment, and I shall lose my life for want of language. If there be here German or Dane, low Dutch, Italian or French, let him speak to me. I'll discover that which shall undo the Florentine. Boscos Valudo, I understand thee and can speak thy tongue. Kelkabunko. <laughs> <laughs> so, betake thee to thy faith, for seventeen poniards are at thy bosom. Oh! Oh, pray, 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 manca bianca sol dulce. Super talented. The general is content to spare thee yet, and hoodwinked as thou art, will lead thee on to gather from thee, happily thou mayest inform something to save thy life. Oh, let me live, and all the secrets of her camp I'll show. Their force, their purposes, nay, I'll speak that which you will wonder at. But wilt thou faithfully? If I do not, damn me. A cordolinda. <laughs> Come on, thou art granted space. Go tell the town, and my brother, we have caught the woodcock, and we'll keep him muffled till we do hear from them. Captain, I will. Uh, or we'll betray us all to ourselves, inform them that. So I will, sir. Till then, I'll keep him dark and safely locked. Mm -hmm.